yeah, we're all good. It's been um, a pretty busy few months with Bush Mills um, due to obviously everything opening back up again and kind of restrictions lifting, especially internally. I've been on the road, Dublin, Cork. I'm in Kilkenny in a couple of weeks' time. So, yeah, all good. Um, we're full steam ahead, actually, with this year's Causeway collection uh, for, for our global market. So it's um, been a busy few weeks, a few months for sure. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Well, that's, you know, I know it's a cliche at this stage, but as we were discussing just before we started there, you know, it's great to have to be busy and be going places and everything now post uh, post COVID. I was, I was London last month and it was really one of those kind of, you know, everyone was letting their hair down for the first time after a long time. So I know I was madness. Yeah, because that was originally meant to happen in March 2020 and we were there exactly. in, in June 2022 uh, would have taken place. So um, it, it was, was um, yeah, it was brilliant. And the new venue as well, the, the bigger yeah, venue yeah, yes, was exactly. so yeah, much better. Yeah. 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 Um, Because I think the like the capacity increased as well, but it didn't feel like it because the space was bigger. So it was really nice. It didn't feel like people were kind of sardined uh into a room full of whiskey which was nice yeah. yeah we were we were so like so busy which is brilliant to see i think we were we were about four to five people deep the entire weekend so no it was it was great and and, and this is a good segue for us to finally start i suppose as people seem to have settled down in the waiting room there although they're very quiet in the chat today um <laughs> we'll um we'll, we'll get we'll get started so Lauren, thank you for joining us and thank you to everyone here for, for joining us. We were just talking about Whiskey Live Dublin and, and obviously this is not our very first with the W Club, but our first since I started with the W Club um, Irish Whiskey Tasting. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll show, you know, we're the originators and uh, the original kings of the game uh, over in Ireland. So um, hopefully Bushmills will come and showcase um, a bit of that, of that this evening. So before I get you to introduce yourself, Lauren, um, do you want to, everyone, we do want to, as for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we do like to get people's tasting notes and questions in the chat. So please do, this is, this is interactive because we're recording it and because um, you know, over 130 of these packs went out, we don't have everyone off mute, but we, you know, we still want it to be engaging. So we want you to be commenting away and chatting away and, and uh, we always get good banter on these chats. So brilliant. So Lauren, you're the brand ambassador for, with Bushmills. So do you want to introduce everyone, uh, introduce yourself to everyone and, and maybe introduce the lineup we'll be going through tonight? A hundred percent, absolutely. Thanks, Luke. Um, hi again, everyone, as I said, um, uh, we really appreciate you taking time out of your evening to join us. Um, I know the numbers of people who uh, received the kits were unbelievable. So it's always kind of humbles us to see how many people are interested in our brand, which is great. Um, so as Luke said, I am the Bushmills brand ambassador for the whole of Ireland. Um, so I have been working with Bushmills now for over eight years. Um, I originally started off my career actually in the distillery itself. Um, so I started there as a tour guide and a whiskey educator. And then three years ago, I joined our wonderful team, Approximo Spirits, um, as brand ambassador. So a massive part of my role now is really on trade education. Um, so my responsibility is traveling all across Ireland, um, educating everything between bartenders, uh, bar managers, floor staff, um, venue managers on the wonderful world of Bushmills, as well as kind of uh, collaborations with people we feel fit the brand really well and uh, consumer events. So basically, in a nutshell, I get to travel all across Ireland spreading the good word of Bushmills. Um, uh, someone's got to do it. <laughs> it's, it's a terrible job, not at all. It's wonderful. Um, and it really is. It's, it's such an honour. Um, to be part of a very small part, of course, uh, in a brand with a 400 year history um, uh, to, to really bring forward that the word and, you know, our legacy, our traditions and, and pass it on to the next generation. So we're always very humbled uh, to be part of Bush Mills. And it is a brand that's very literally very close to home for me. Um, so the old Bush Mills distillery, of course, I'm sure some of you have maybe visited there or it's certainly visited um, Ireland at least. Um, it is quite literally about 20 minutes drive from my house. So um, you, can, you nearly smell it sometimes when the wind blows in the right direction. <laughs> um, so it really is a piece of home, which is wonderful. So yeah, and um, the, the lineup this evening, um, Bushmills, of course, we are first and foremost a single malt uh, whiskey distillery. And the, the five drams that we will be tasting this evening are of course highlighting um, the absolute pinnacle of Bushmills and what we do very well. We've got our core range, the 10, 16 and 21, wonderful whiskies. Uh, and then we have two really, really special uh, whiskies which formed part of the UK Causeway collection last year. So um, 
I'm really, really hoping that you enjoy it. I can't wait to try them again. Um, it's been a little while since I tried the, the UK Causeway, so I'm excited. Also, um, just in case I might sound a little bit unenthusiastic, I have a wisdom tooth coming through and it's an absolute nightmare. Um, so I genuinely do want to be here. I'm just in a little bit of pain, but whiskey helps. <laughs> <laughs> whiskey helps. <laughs> um, um, well, so thank, you for, thank, thank you for soldiering through. Um, ah, and don't we, silly. <laughs> we are in terms of the lineup. So we are going to go, we are, because I know some people like to get them all lined up in front of you. So we Absolutely. are going to go by the year. So it's going to be 10, 16, 21. And then the 2000 um, Causeway and then the 1991. Absolutely. Um, brilliant. And because obviously, you know, I know that we were just saying that obviously you're first and foremost a, a single malt distillery. And, and I must say some of the, the best single malts ever produced in Ireland are, are, are Bushmills single malts, including ones that, that are no longer, you know, being bottled under the Bushmills brand, but that malt that exists from the early 90s, which is Absolutely. Um, really exciting to try. But um you obviously the, the brands that, that people in ireland you might see in bars are obviously um blends as well so you know i think there's there's a lot of people i don't know people on here but i know a lot of people i know who you know only in, in the last maybe three or four years tried a, a bushmills malt that wasn't a blend for the first time and, and were really blown away by it yeah exactly i mean i think you know a lot of people when when they hear the word bushmills think black bush uh or or the original which are two unbelievably iconic whiskies and um, black bush notably um which of course is a blend and it's i mean it's it would probably be my kind of go-to whiskey you know if you're in doubt if you don't know what you want to drink you would reach for a black bush it really is wonderful so absolutely we do we do have blended whiskies as part of the family um the original and black bush being the, the most well known 100 percent um but as you said look it really is the single malt that bushmills um has kind of globally made itself known for um, and I think especially in recent years we've tried to really leverage that message um, you know to, to, we really were the original Irish single malt and I think the Causeway collection has really helped us achieve that and kind of spread that knowledge of, of the fact that we are very proud of producing single malt whiskey. Fabulous. So that could be a good segue to start with our with our 10 year old what do you reckon? I think so too <laughs> straight in. And it's, you know, what's so wonderful about virtual tastings as well is I don't have to drive anywhere. I'm always on the wrong side of the whiskey um, because I always have to educate people but never get to drink it because I have to drive home. But I'm at home, <laughs> so it's wonderful. So the first whiskey that we're going to try tonight, everyone has looks already said anyway, is the Bushmills 10-year single malt whiskey. I'm going to go ahead and pour that right into my glass. I don't know what glass you're drinking out of. I have a two glass, actually. I found one. I haven't yeah. used one in a while. I have a Glen Cairn glass, but I also have a two F for one of the next whiskies. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> So I, both people, both I don't Irish know if people, Scottish if people on here would know the two of glass is like the, it's Irish for uh, oh, family or clan. So it's like, uh, yeah, it was, it was designed by a woman called Rosie about three or four years ago. And it's, uh, it's meant to be like, you know, a, to try and associate with, with Irish whiskey the way that the Glen Kern is associated with Scotch whiskey. So an apt one for the night, Lauren. Great, great shout. Glassware. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it kind of has, as you said, the little, it's almost like a little triangular base. So it's really easy to hold the whiskey. So the idea is that you're not really warming up with your hand if you don't want to. Obviously, you absolutely can, but you're not actually holding the, the glass directly as such, which is nice. So beautiful glasses. Mm. Max is rocking a full line of Glen Cairns. I mean, I do love a Glen Cairn glass as well. <laughs> no, they are, they are, they are iconic. They're hard to beat. Although I'm not a big fan of the mini Glen Cairns. Um, you get you get them in bars in in Glasgow, and uh, I always find them disappointing. Oh yeah, I Just actually think the, I have the one computer. up there. I've actually got a little um Tullamore. To go. Sorry, <clears throat> I've got another Irish whiskey branded Capita here um as well for it. So you know, rocking the different lineup. Um, Mark's cut Mark's styling them from Singapore as well. That's dedication, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell so, us about the, the 10 year old here, Lauren? Absolutely. So the 10 year. Now, before we actually dive into the whiskey, I have a bottle beside me here because we've actually got a little bit of a, a brand refresh. I don't know if anyone has seen this, um, but the bottle for our malt whiskies changed late last year. Um, sort of the, the end of November, start of December. So we've went from having kind of more of a taller, slimmer bottle to one that's a little bit more square and a little bit more chunky, if you like. Um, so again, just to build on the point about leveraging the single malt whiskies, um, the distinction was created between the malt, the malts 
and the blends. So the likes of the original and the Blackbush, they won't change the bottle, but the three, the three core malts will. Um, so again, just creating that little bit of a distinction. And of course, our home at the Old Bush Mills Distillery, um, we're, we always talk about how indebted we are to our home and our landscape and our surroundings. Um, the Giants Causeway is two minutes away from the Old Bush Mills Distillery. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but the bottom of the glass has a little hexagonal causeway stone. You can see there. That's pretty there cool. Are. So it's beautiful. No one ever notices that. And when I show them, they love it. <laughs> it was like no one really looks underneath bottles. But anyway, so the 10 year. You might notice it as, as it's going into the bottle bank, you know. Exactly. Oh, crash. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, lovely. I've thrown it away now, too late. <laughs> um, absolutely. So the 10 year, this was actually, believe it or not, the very first whiskey I ever tasted. I set my standards quite high with the first whiskey. Um, so the 10 year is, of course, our, it's really what we call the blueprint um, of Irish single malt whiskey. So this is a double wood. So we age this whiskey predominantly in ex bourbon casks. About 90% uh, bourbon casks are used here. And we finish it off just by using a couple of um, Oloroso, Spanish Oloroso sherry casks, which we source from Jerez in the south of Spain. So on the nose, I, for me personally, so we always talk about the Bushmills DNA, which is the triple distilled single malt spirit. So the spirit we produce on site, it is produced 100% from unpeated Irish malted barley and triple distilled. That Bushmills DNA is characterized by having beautiful hints of pears and green apple. And I always find that the Bushmills DNA is actually reflected most heavily in the tenure. Um, it's such a delicate whiskey. It's so approachable. I absolutely love it. Um, Gary's just said banoffee pie, a hundred percent. See when you walk <clears throat> into the distillery, what is in this glass is pretty much exactly what hits you in the face. Um, as soon as you walk into the distillation area, I find um, pears, pears jump through straight away. There's almost that little bit of subtle citrus as well. Very There's Moorish. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, very Moorish, as, as Lee says, and there's a, a, a lovely pepper, peppery has come up twice as well in, in those um, comments, which is which is which I think is, is quite apt as well. Um, 100%. James, is, James is the first time trying Bushmills tonight and I'm already on the 10 getting the honey flavor sweet with a tang of cinnamon. Um, so that's kind of that peppery spiciness. Love loving the, the geeky bottle shape facts. Brilliant. I James, I love that this is your first Bushmills whiskey. Um, that's amazing. Uh, again, you've started pretty strong. <laughs> So hopefully we'll, we'll hopefully we'll have converted you by the end of tonight. But yeah, absolutely. Burnt toffee, one hundred percent comes in there as well. I haven't had a sip yet. I know the rest of you have, but sorry, I, I couldn't wait um, <laughs> once it was poured. It's so beautiful. Do you know what I often find as well is with the ten year there is a really really subtle, almost like a milk chocolatey note coming in there. Um, even if you have, if anybody has a little bit of chocolate uh, and within reaching distance or in a near vicinity, grab it and try them together. It is unbelievable. It took me, it took me a while to be able to pick it up, but then as soon as I had a little bit of chocolate many years ago, um, it just came straight through. Absolutely beautiful. And the honey, hundred percent, spot on. Yeah, Chris is a great note there. Marzipan candy and fudge on the nose for me. Defo getting the pepper spice too, right? Um, yeah, and butterscotch spice, uh, spice honey oak comes in there. Um, Brian says, uh, nice, but would be so much better at 49% non chill filters. It needs some mouthfeel. I, I think, Lawrence, we did a tasting a while back, and we one did. of the things that kept coming up was people were like, oh, we want to see more cast strength bush mills. But luckily, the last two we're trying today are our cast strength bush mills. I, before the question inevitably comes up at some point tonight, will there ever be a core range cast strength? Well, this is this is what I was going to say, Brian. We are listening. Um, we have had so many kind of, and, and feedback is always so important to us, of course. But I mean, the Causeway is a perfect example of the fact that we do listen to people who drink our, our whiskey um, with the cast strength kind of crusades that's been happening the past couple of years. Um, I don't know for certain, however, we did have a discussion a few weeks back about potentially doing something with the core range. And that's all I'm going to say. Um, can't confirm, but it, we are listening and we understand that that is one of the main things. And it's, do you know, it's really interesting. It kind of just reminds us how 
well thought of that the core range is because we, we you know you have the causeway collection you've got you know 20 30 year old whiskies appearing in that collection but people still acknowledge and remember the core range and they want to kind of see it at a little bit of a higher abv so yeah we'll see um i also think blackbush as well even blackbush at 46 would be great i think 46 seems to be the sweet spot actually judging by what i've kind of learned from doing these tastings mm. And we did um, one of the tastings that I, I've done in the past, which was, was uh, Bushmills 21 deconstruction and the, the, that had a, a cast strength 21 uh, at the end, which obviously has never been formally released, but it was not going to lie. And it's not hyperbole. It was one of the nicest Irish whiskies I've ever had. Like it was yep. phenomenal. Like um, Jeff is coming there with another uh, tasting note, uh, licorice and wet moss uh, on a crisp, crisp Irish, Irish evening. There you go. Very, uh, evocative uh i love that it's um (laughs) i love it's it's whiskey we funny myself and alex thomas our master blender had this conversation earlier we you know it's so great that whiskey is subjective because i think everyone has you know when you smell a certain aroma or flavor it brings you back to a point in time that you maybe think actually yeah that tastes like such and such for me the 16 you'll see what i mean when we talk about it um it's very specific but Again, whiskey is subjective. Um, but, you know, so many people say to me when I'm doing tastings and things like, oh, yeah, this reminds me of Christmas when, you know, my my mum used to pour loads of whiskey into the, the Christmas cake or something like that as well. So it's always always brought back to a core memory, almost. Mm. No, certainly. Um, it is. And, and those kind of memories are, are always very personal. Um, and it's great. Exactly. Yeah. Definitely one of the reasons why we... We love drinking whiskeys. You know, there's two reasons to drink whiskey, I guess, you know, to either remember these things or to try and forget them. Um, <laughs> so the Gavin says the 50% cent would be a great call, just like the classic laddie. Um, no, that's that's an excellent shout. Yeah. And this this uh, 10 year old. Um, so at the end of this tasting, guys, I have a discount code for you as per usual for 15 percent off. But this whiskey without the discount is 38 pounds um, on the site. So, I mean, for, for such quality for uh, an age statement malt, um it's hard it's hard to beat now um before we come on to the 16 lauren obviously a lot of these are a lot of most scotch not all but the majority of scotch is, is mm. distilled and the, the old cliche is that all irish is triple distilled which is obviously we all know as lies but years years is triple <laughs> distilled um so could you tell us a bit about that that just that triple distillation and the impact it has on the malt a hundred percent so um obviously on site as we said we're using 100 percent unpeated irish malted barley now currently we are using on average per week 300 tons of barley um i remember a reading somewhere that a boeing 747 is like 227 tons so we're actually using more barley than the weight of a, a plane <laughs> so you can't picture 300 tons of barley but you can picture an airplane <laughs> um so what what we aim to do with that malt throughout the distillation process obviously there are three things that we really want to do throughout distillation. We want to purify the alcohol, we want to increase the ABV, and then we also want to select and concentrate the flavor compounds that really contribute to the style and the character of whiskey that we want. Now, one of those compounds that we really focus on, it massively impacts the flavor of our, our base spirit, the Bushmills DNA, as I mentioned, um, are the, the esters. So they're very, very fruity. And that's what we're trying to do throughout that distillation process is concentrate them. And from that, you get those beautiful, as I said, the pears, the bananas and the green, the fresh green apple, which is exactly what you've all picked up on with the tenure, which is wonderful. So no matter what cask, what you know, barrel we go on to age our, our Bushmills DNA or malt spirit in, you will always be able to draw it right back to that baseline spirit, which comes off the third and final distillation which is wonderful it's it's beautiful i mean i wish maybe maybe next time look we'll send out a little sample of the new make spirit because everyone then when they try that wants us to release it <laughs> never mind the core range at 46 percent it is uh because you we were talking about you were saying that the 10 year old is like the the dna you know, has the bushmills dna in it and that you can uh-huh. get that in the in that new make those pairs those really oh massively cool it's, it's yeah um it's it's really cool an interesting thing as well about the 10 year, it was launched initially in 1985 um, p- before the second kind of run production of labels, if you like, what was released. All it said on the bottle was single malt um, whiskey. However, a couple of years later, I think Bushmills, there's a little bit of a, 
not a kind of conflict, but we really wanted to define that label and what we exactly meant by that a little bit more, especially because Scotch whiskey or Scotland was kind of, you know, renowned for producing um, single, single malt whiskey. So in 1987, when we kind of re-released it, it was the first Irish whiskey to state single malt Irish whiskey on the bottle. Prior to that, it would have been pure malt, pure old would have been on the bottle. So we like to think that by doing that, we almost kind of created what we meant by the single malt Irish whiskey category. So obviously whiskey for just one single distillery being Bushmills and 100% Irish malted barley as well. Um, and what year so was yeah. that, sorry, did you say? So 1985 was the initial release and then 1987 was the second run of that, yeah. Oh, I, did, I didn't know that. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, we actually got a, this is an interesting question, from Daniel and Heather, uh, who are asking what angle the, the line arms and the, the stills are. Do you know? Um, I, don't, I don't know the exact angle as in, in terms of kind of what percentage it would be at. However, it does angle upwards into, into the, the condensers. Um, obviously for entrainment and things like that, what you're going to do is get anything you don't want to run back down into the still. The exact angle that's something I've never been asked before. So that's a really interesting question. And I will find that out. <laughs> there you go. No, excellent question, Daniel. Keeping keep on our toes. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is visited Bushmills a few years ago, beautiful parts of the world. Uh, and the Giants Causeway is a must. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, that we're so rooted to our home as well. Like, um, obviously, we Bushmills has never moved production from the site that we are originally on. Um, and a massive part of that is obviously down to the water source, the river bush. Um, <clears throat> we still draw every single drop of water from a little stream of that called St. Columns Rill. Um, so it was a really, really vital part in locating the distillery um, many hundreds of years ago, and it still is today as well. Um, so we physically could not produce whiskey anywhere else in the world, essentially. So we really do go hand in hand with, with our home and with the causeway. Um, the name Bush Mills as well, I don't know if any of you guys know this, um, but it's a question that I always get asked, where did the name come from? So many people think it was someone called some, someone Bushmills. I mean, that's completely fair enough. You have, you know, John Jameson, whatever. Um, the name Bushmills actually comes from the village. So if you go down to the little village itself, it's a very small place. It's about probably a population of 1,200 people. Um, if you go down to the river, you can see the, the water mills by the river. And then the locals named the river, the River Bush. So Bush Mills came together and that's how we got our name. So a lot of people don't know that it literally came from the village as well itself. No, excellent. Um, it might be good. Speaking of, 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 of you know, um, these, the iconic things associated with Bushmills, because Bushmills 16, um, I know there's a this fellow, you probably know him as well, down in the Shandon Bar in Cork, um, uh, Mark Longerman, who is, I've never known a person um, in the world more obsessed with Bushmills 16. Um, this guy like would just drink it from morning to night um, if he could. Um, and it is, I must say, it is one of my favorite drams as well. Will we come on to the, to the 16? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, he I know him very well. He actually, did you see him at Whiskey Live? He was, he no. was rocking your stand at Whiskey Live. He was indeed, yeah. And he was he was telling everyone, he was like, Bushmill 16 is genuinely my favourite whiskey. I'm not just saying that because they're paying me to be here. He was like, honestly. <laughs> no, I've known Mark a long time and it, it, I can I can attest that he's obsessed with, with, with 16. He loves it. He, yeah, oh, he absolutely loves it. all whiskey in the world, yeah. 100%. I mean, the 16... Uh, and what's interesting as well, when we come onto the causeway, um, the 16 and 21, we're really building on the on the 16 and 21 for the causeway releases that we're going to cover. Um, so it'll be really interesting for you to be able to draw the parallels between the two. Uh, when obviously when we come onto the causeways a little bit later on. So yes, the Bushmill 16 year. Um, this this would probably, I think I agree with Mark in that sense, would be my favorite whiskey within the core range. Um, Every single time you go back to this whiskey, you find something different. You just pick up another flavor, another aroma. It is unbelievable. It's, an, it's just bursting with, with flavor, absolutely packed full. Um, so the 16 is a triple, a three wood uh, whiskey. So it originally starts its life aging in bourbon and sherry casks for 16 years. We then marry those casks. And for at least nine months, we finish off in port wine casks, ruby port casks. Um, so what you'll find from the whiskey, it really is for me, the port that has the massive influence uh, on here as well. So now this is what I was saying, drawn back to earlier about being really specific. <laughs> the nose I get from the 16 is blackcurrant wine gums. Mm. 
That's Everyone amazing. just nodded yeah. there. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like black currant, almost it's just like that really juicy fruit sweetness. Star mm. cherry, yeah, Gary, spot on. There's some fantastic tasting notes coming in there. Yeah, um, amazing, absolutely. Yeah. Matthew says, uh, great nose, fantastic sherry hit with a background orchard of apples or orchard of apples just faintly coming through and a Black Forest Gatto cake uh, finishing, I'm thinking. The Black Forest Gatto is good because obviously you've got that fruit, that dark fruit and exactly. chocolateiness in there. Um, yeah, Ribena, more... Ribena is spot on, mm. actually. Uh, no, it's Ribena is a, a great one as well, yeah. yeah. Um, the balance is very good in the 16. Um, Blackcurrant wine gums, as you say, yeah. Uh, no, there's some absolutely great, um, great taste notes coming in there. No, it is, it is an exceptional dram, um, I must say. And uh, I'll actually just check, double check what, how much it is. I think we have it for about eighty-seven um, pounds because it was about ninety-five euros when I worked in Irish whiskey, and I think it's one of the best whiskies in Irish whiskey under a hundred euros, like you know. Hundred um, percent. And then, yeah, I saw a comment kind of a little bit further, further up the chat about the the oakiness, the wood, hundred percent. Um, obviously, because it has spent a considerable amount of time in a barrel, you're absolutely going to get that coming through for sure. Someone said mixed fruit jam, 100%. I always say for me, it's like strawberry jam. Mm -hmm. And then I just had a little sip yeah. there. The almond is really, it's a lovely kind of almond undertone coming in there. Mm -hmm. Caramelized fruits as well, peaches. Someone's asked me, where did I get my glass from? This glass is... It is a tour glass, but it's actually an Irish Whiskey Society glass. <laughs> they gave it to me at a taste in like three years ago, I think. I've got like four. This is the thing when you when you work in the industry, people just give you stuff after events. You should see my spare room. It is a nightmare. <laughs> this is a clear out. Well, I, you know what? I'm, I'll see if we can um, if we can get some branded W Club tour glasses on the website. So um, leave that with me, folks. And by the end of the summer, hopefully we'll we'll have that sorted. Yeah, um, lovely glasses, gorgeous glasses. Bakewell tart, yeah, Brian, I like that. <clears throat> yeah, so this the sixteen we launched it back in it was nineteen ninety seven, and at that time it was more or less unparalleled um, to have a whiskey aged in three different casks. Um, so it really kind of was ahead of its time at that point as well, and it was obviously it was the the oldest whiskey in the Bushmills collection up until. Um, the year 2000 when we had do you remember look the millennium mm -hmm. 25 year and then obviously the 21 year which we're going to come on to next was launched in 2001 so it really did have a good few years in the spotlight of being and there was the um the millennium the crystal malt one oh which, stop yeah, whiskey. yeah it's um it's beautiful but again people are saying about 46 percent um it, is, it definitely is something we hear a lot of, which we're <laughs> absolutely appreciating. James has said, this is so smooth and easy in the mouth. Following on from earlier, I think it'd be amazing. And a slightly higher ABV. <laughs> Sherry proved this at the end. Uh, now kicked the 10 off my favourite Bushmills now. I love this. Um, it's going to be, okay, the 16 is my favourite now. Actually, 21. Uh, James, just wait until you get on to the last two. And then we'll see, we'll see what the favourite is. Gavin, the three woods are, so bourbon and sherry for 16 years and then port is the finish you're saying that that the the 10 you know 16 is not the 10 off and 21 not the 21 off mm. I was on Isla recently and uh someone said someone uh, was asked what their favorite whiskey was and they said whichever one you're giving me next <laughs> so uh, <laughs> i love that absolutely yeah i think um that Dan's is, made a good yeah, point there about not noticing 40 as much in uh, in the 16 which shows how viscous it is great mouthfeel yeah a hundred percent. I think that's, that was something, another conversation we had as well. I don't know, but I mean, obviously everyone has their own opinions. I think if you were going to put one of them at 46, it probably would benefit the 10 year a little bit more than the 16 and 21, just because it is so delicate. Whereas with the 16, it's so packed full of flavor anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, I think, I think it's beautiful at 40. I don't know if anyone's been adding water into their whiskey you don't really need it to be honest with the core range um i just do it with the with the causeway um because it could obviously completely changes the flavor brings out some of the more subtle notes dark chocolate yeah absolutely and ian says minty taste and tosh says a slightly bitter taste uh darker chocolate on the finish uh that tempers the sweetness nicely um uh, ian as well also great uh, i get a minty aftertaste lingering james i could easily drink this uh, as just an afternoon drinker on a sunny day without realizing how much i would had 
this could be a dangerous bottle for me to buy. <laughs> Yeah, well, you have, to, you have to chance it and find out, James, you know, what's the worst that can happen? That is brilliant. Another really in, kind of interesting little fact about our port wine casks and the Madeira wine casks. So they're made by a company, kind of a cooperage called Taco Pal. And before we use them, both the port and the Madeira are seasoned for three years with the Ruby port wine or the Madeira wine. And I was actually chatting to Alex Thomas, um, our master blender, um, a couple of months ago. And it didn't always just to be this case. But again, it's just because we've built up that relationship with our kind of cast suppliers. They are actually all made now to our specification size wise. So our port casts and the Madeira casts are all they're all 500 litres because um, we find that to be kind of the sweet spot for maturation and the duration and what the cast can give you. Obviously, um, you know, some port casts are 650, um, but we find the 500, obviously, because it's decreasing the surface area slightly, it really has that beautiful impact on the whiskey. Um, so all of the casts now, bar the bourbon, are made to our own spec, which is really nice. Um, and Alex only started there uh, recently, didn't they? She did, yeah. So Alex was... Um, she has... but She's an absolute superstar. She started her career as a timber merchant, before she actually started working in the old Bushmills distillery. So she's been with us there now for over 18 years. Um, so she initially started in the maturation area. You know, she was in charge of kind of looking after the casts, even sourcing and bringing in new barrels um, for us to use. And then she was given the green light in 2017, it was, no, sorry, beg your pardon. Um, yes, it was 17, actually, 18 was the Irish release um, to launch the Sexton single malt Irish whiskey, which I know everybody on the call will probably be um, familiar with, or at least have heard of. And then 10th of November last year, she was appointed Bushmills Master Blender. So absolutely. So um, yeah, she's she's <laughs> she's absolutely flat out now with everything going on because she's bringing in new casks. She's kind of finding her feet in the new role. But um, yeah, she's a superstar. Couldn't have happened to a nicer person. She really is. Oh, fantastic. Um, I don't know about, about you guys, but I pretty much finished at 60. <laughs> um, so uh, is there a consensus that we move on to the 21 or not? We see some heads. I can see James is nodding away there. Um, so is Steph. Yeah. So, okay. I think we'll move on. So apologies for anyone um, that that's a bit fast work, but um, I'm, I'm, I've got a thirst in me now. Um, yeah, <laughs> Margaret, no stopping us now. Alex has her name on the Causeway three bottles. Wow. She does indeed. Yeah. So this is the first series um, of Cosplay Collection bottles that her name will be on, um, which is great. It's wonderful. I think she was there the day that they were bottled as well. And just seeing her kind of name, I think she's got the number one bottle from whatever release it was. Um, never. I was like, you can't open that. Never open that. <laughs> yeah, flip it um, on, on, on uh, the Whiskey Shop Auctions website. <laughs> you're listening, Alex. Exactly. Go down in history, 100%. But yeah, they, they are indeed on it for sure. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a really exciting time for her. And obviously it's great that me and her would work very closely together in terms of um, the launches and things. So yeah, it's brilliant to see how she's kind of stepped into the new role for sure. Fantastic. Um, so so on to 21. Is, is 21. Yes, 21 year. Now, I, I want to hear everyone's feedback on this because it's always really interesting. Most people have one or the other out of the 16 and 21 that they prefer. So it'll be interesting to see when you taste them, what you think. I nearly, so the, 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 <laughs> the cork for the 21 is actually metal. I know you will not be able to see this on here, but it's actually metal. And the first time I took the, the cork out of the bottle, I had a glass table in my apartment. I just thought it was an ordinary cork. I nearly cracked the entire table. You should feel the weight of this. You could do some serious damage. <laughs> but anyway, it's beautiful. So the 21. The 21, again, uh, similar to the 16. So we mentioned, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, this was launched in 2001. Um, similar to the 16, it is a three wood. So we age in three different casks. So a little bit longer this time in the bourbon and sherry. So 19 years in bourbon and sherry. We marry those casks for at least two years. So a two year finish in Madeira wine casks. So this very much um, for me personally, actually, I'll not tell you which one I prefer because that might influence you. <laughs> for, um, the 21 year, I think, is massively a dessert whiskey like if you had the option to have 
a pavlova or a 21 year i would go for the 21 year um it's just as a, a, it's a great substitute well. exactly feel less guilty 100 <laughs> percent well equally your listeners will also uh know that you said when we were tasting the 16 that is your favorite in the core range so i already said that didn't i that was great <laughs> i landed myself in it already <laughs> so they're 21 it it has a much more delicate nose in comparison to the 16, I believe. Um, for me, the first thing that always without feel jumps out is the orange citrus. Mm. Almost like, you know, if you were to express a kind of an orange peel over an old fashioned, exactly that, just that beautiful, delicate orange citrus. And it also has that really subtle hint of tobacco in there as well. Um, obviously it's been, it's been in a barrel for over 21 years, can possibly even be up to 25 years. Warehouse <laughs> funk, exactly. <laughs> Warehouse funk. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly it's, it's what it berries. is. Um, you can you can really get that that kind of yeah that orange zest. There's something else that I can't quite put my my finger on. It's almost like a, a pistachio uh, nuttiness or something. But um, yeah, a hundred percent. It's a, no, it's a, it's an extraordinary whiskey. Actually, I I'm, I was actually in my being you know dropping my opinion here um which is not very relevant to anything but i was coming into this thinking oh you know i love the 16 and everything but that 21 actually it's been a, been maybe a year or so since i've had it and it's actually if you forget how good it is um it's it's really yeah good. john has exactly. said uh, really enjoying both the 16 and the 21 quite different but both taste great garris is a very drink a very drinkable fruit salad very good <laughs> Salad. difficult to drink so it's 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 good it's it's handy in that direction in that sense no it's so it's it's just like satin honestly it's absolutely beautiful it's such a mellow whiskey i'm getting now i'm kind of getting apricots mm. i can definitely see what you mean apricot wise yeah um dances like the 10 year old uh wealthy auntie clean taut very precise uh creme brulee uh, didn't think i'd prefer to the red breast if i can say that oh there we are Great. you're allowed to say that dan that's okay <laughs> you are um it's everyone's opinion is valid and we don't uh, we don't bias towards brands on here um mel's very fruity on the nose uh overripe bananas old uh pennies come uh comes to mind uh creme brulee's come up again there from mark 21 is fantastic yeah, so smooth absolutely says, says lee um no creme brulee's really because Creme brulee is a tasting note. You're speaking of the red breast. That the, one of the spot whiskies, creme brulee, often comes up as mm. a tasting note. And obviously, the yellow spot is a Madeira finish as well. So obviously, a creme brulee must be coming from the Madeira. Just then, um, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it is that. Is exactly the sweet kind of dessert wine. But mm -hmm. I'm saying I love those notes. Everyone's saying like warehouse funk. The the old pennies. That is. It's it's almost a little bit musty, but in the per the best possible mm. way. For sure. But yeah, apricot jam. Yeah, Ian, that's what I said. Obviously, the apricots come through for sure. Um, and the thing as well, so some of our older um, kind of casks that we would have on site at the distillery, that now we're sitting now at 450,000 barrels that we currently have, which is unbelievable. Um, so some of our kind of older whiskies, kind of the more rare, more special casks, um, like the Madeira and the Port, actually, um, they would be held in the racked warehouses. So we have both racked and we have palletized warehouses, but the more rare casks will be kept in the racked warehouses, usually and primarily because it's much easier to access them. So obviously you can really keep an eye on them. You can really guard them. And I think that's even more evident with the causeways, how well that those whiskies for being the age that they are have held their ABV is unbelievable. So it kind of shows you, you know, one, the quality of the casks, but how well they're looked after being in the rack warehouses. And what is what is the output of the distillery at the moment? So, um, the, yeah, that actually brings us on to a really nice point. The, so we're annually average 5 million litres. However, we have constructed a new distillery. Now, we haven't really officially talked about this or launched it yet, um, just because they're still kind of in the very final stages of getting it up and running. But the new distillery, um, it's still it's still on the original Bushmill site. We're not moving anywhere, but that will enable us to essentially double our output. Um, so again, kind of falling into the growth of Irish whiskey in general, it shows you where Bushmills slots into that as well. So really, really exciting time, really exciting no. time. I think what they're trying to do is match the character of the new distillery to the old one, obviously. So we're keeping the consistency. And keep up the demand for proper 12. 
The um, ah, stop. <laughs> look. Do you have? Um, is there going to be a, a grain still in the new distillery? Um. So far, no. So far, it's still malt. Um. We're still one hundred percent malt distillery. Whether or not that will ever happen, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> who, who honestly knows? Um. So no, it's currently it's currently all malt. But as I said, never say never. Who knows? <laughs> Um, James has said this is a tough top up toss up between the 16 and 21. That 16 is a session whiskey, sunny afternoon. This I feel is a post meal with a sweet dessert, a good warming around the late summer fire. Um, so James basically, rather than picking a favorite, he's going horses for horses. Um, and that ties in <laughs> with what you were saying about the, um, you know, the, the rather the, you'd prefer to the panna cotta, um, which I think was the panna cotta, yeah. the dessert you said. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Daniel and Heather says, how old is the oldest cask in the warehouse? That is such um, a great way to ask me or get me to say how old is the oldest whiskey. You guys are too clever for your own good. <laughs> um, I, I will say one thing. The oldest whiskey that we Bushmills has ever launched is about to be a 33-year-old. And it's older than that. And that's all I'm going to say. The oldest cask is older than that. <laughs> Um, um, which actually isn't isn't the grand scheme of things isn't that old considering how old no, the well, well, it was built or whatever exactly however um keep your eyes peeled next year because there is quite a few really big things coming from us and that's i'm gonna leave it there <laughs> Very good. doesn't matter how much whiskey i have i will never i will never tell any any secrets <laughs> <laughs> What would that cask be? Oh, but James, if you're talking about the 33 year that I mentioned, it's a, it's a port cask. I can say that because we literally just announced it today. So it's going to be a port cask. Um, Tasha said, this is going to test my ability um, <laughs> to read. Um, a bit pretentious <laughs> note here, but I get a hint of something uh, like, and spelling is key here, uh, Fisayas. Um, I actually don't know what that is, to be honest. I'm going to admit my ignorance um, rather than pretending, uh, and I'm going to give it a Google. Um, One step ahead of everyone there, Tosh. <laughs> Tangy fruit, uh, though. They're like those little um, uh, cherries that you see on desserts. Um, I think I had an eau de vie made with them once. Uh, that's actually a really good shout, Tosh, I must say. Uh, and not pretentious at all. Um, Lisa's love the pork cask. Uh, is, and what's the other oldest cask? Oh, yeah, I was going to say the maraschino cherries. Is it like the maraschino cherries? No. No, it's not maraschino, but but uh, maraschino is probably a good uh, taste note as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm. Um, they're yeah. like the little cherry, they're kind of orange cherries with the, the dried leaves around them. Um, ah, nice. Oh, you've literally just explained that, Tosh. Sorry. <laughs> Overlooked that one, the little yellow ones and leaves. <laughs> you literally just explained that. And we were trying to explain it to everyone else. <laughs> Fair play. Um, Fair no, that's, that's excellent. Um, so if, has anyone got any other questions on the on the 21 before we, we move on to the to the causeway? Uh Jen just says Lauren is tactfully ignoring yes, I am. Uh, I am. giving anything away for the, for the I can see podcast. it. <laughs> uh, no, but in all seriousness, I think it's um what we're kind of what we're doing with Bushmills at the minute, um, especially the causeway collection and what we have done and what obviously we're about to do this year as well. Um it was well needed. Um, for so many years, we were viewed as kind of this sleeping giant of Irish whiskey. I think I said that to you before, Look on the, on the tasting a couple of years back. Bushmills was kind of seen as, okay, yeah, they're a great distillery, their whiskies are beautiful, but that's kind of where it stopped. And I think people were just crying out with, um, you know, requests of please, you know, you've got 400,000 casts. We know you must have some absolute gems back there. And I think, you know, we, we never rush anything we'll always release um whiskies when we feel they're ready and we feel that um you know they're ready to kind of be shown to the world um and i think that yeah the likes of the causeway collection and what we're doing and the plans for next year it was well needed and very well received and it kind of it kind of ignited a little bit of a spark back into us again as well um you know because it's something new to talk about and it kind of reminded us why people love bush mills and why we do what we do so yeah great to see Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose being that kind of sleeping giant is also what's allowed Bushmills to survive the 20th century in Irish whiskey when so many brands didn't like, you know, um, the fact that you were kind of nimble and consistent and and able to mothball in, in ways that other distilleries weren't. So Exactly. And when you think once upon a time, you know, kind of 1960s, it was us in Middleton, literally Bushmills yeah. in Middleton. Um, and now we have what, over 40? 
I think it was the last official. Yeah, I think for, 40 or 42 for, I was reading recently. I was going to say 42, I think it is. Yeah, it's phenomenal, like unbelievable. Yeah, no, it is amazing um, how, how much has changed in the last 10, literally the last 10 years in Irish history. Li- yeah. Exactly, 10 years, 100%. Someone's, <laughs> are we going to get a discount in this one, Mel? <laughs> Well, they, they discounted all the whiskeys tasted here tonight. So the 21-year-old is, is £190 sterling and, and 100% the discount um, that I'll give you is going to be a 15% off. But if he was referring to the one that you were talking about, the 33-year-old, the, then probably not. Um, <laughs> not from this tasting anyway. Um, Gary said 2000, is, which is super musky, dark and which means he's jumped forward. So let's, let's that. use that as the... As the that's a good... Well played, Gary. Gary move us I am going to rinse one. my glass very quickly. Give me two seconds. While Lauren's doing that, I heard a good one there recently, folks. What you get when uh, when you cross an elephant in a rhino? <laughs> Elephino. So there you go. Just kill some of that dead air. Um, so we're moving on to that the 2000. A, um, that was a dad joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lisa, we are, are now, we're on the 2000 the, uh, Causeway collection. Folks. We are indeed, um, we're on the two, 2000 Port uh, Causeway collection. So obviously, guys, feel free to nose away, um, have a little nose, even a little sip, a taste of the whiskey. Um, I want to talk a little bit just about the Causeway collection in general. I've kind of already mentioned this about kind of the innovation um, and, you know, that people were crying out for. But the Causeway collection, hands down for me, certainly in my career with Bushmills anyway, is um, this This is the best thing we've ever done, um, is the Causeway collection, 100%. It just epitomizes every single great thing that Bushmills is, <clears throat> what we stand for, what we do best, what we do well, and that's single malt whiskey. So the Causeway collection, it was initially launched back in... September 2020, so right smack bang in the middle of COVID. Um, I think we were actually in our, God knows, 500th lockdown at that point. I can't even remember. It feels so long ago. Um, But September 2020 and the Causeway Collection, obviously it's been inspired, hence the name, by our home on the north coast of Ireland and the Giants Causeway being so kind of inherent to who Bush Mills are as a brand. And they are a series of single malt cast strength non-chill filtered whiskies that have been aged either partially or entirely in really unique casks really special casks either some that we've used before but not used in this way or some that we've never used before entirely so that's a little bit about the background of the collection we had our collection last year as well of course which is what these two whiskies are from and we also have our Causeway collection for this year, which we've literally just announced today um, on the on the Bushmills channels. So the Port 2000 cask, the how we can position um, these two whiskies, so the Port 2000 and the, the 1991 Madeira, these are like the big brothers to the two whiskies you've just had. So the 16 year, the 2000 Port is its big brother. So you will find some similarities, but really just a much more enhanced depth and complexity to the whiskey. Uh, And the 21 is a big brother to the 1991 Madeira. So the 2000 port cast, as I said, these are all cast strength. This is 54.1% ABV. You would not think that this is a cast strength whiskey. So once again, this links back to the quality of our um, malt spirits, the Bushmills DNA, but also the casks, how well we look after them and the quality of the casks as well. So this whiskey, Jeff, you've just asked there, um, which is a great question. This has spent its entire life in a first fill ruby port cask, its whole life. Um, It's really unusual for a whiskey to spend its entire life in one type of cask not to mention a cask as beautiful as the Ruby Port cask. So for me, I mean, look at the color. It's a gorgeous color. It's like red gold almost. Absolutely amazing. Mm. For me personally, it's it's kind of the luscious red fruits come in there as well. So like we mentioned earlier, I get raspberries, I get strawberries, very fresh. Someone's just said raspberries. Yep, spot on. Um, no, it's really, really interesting. Um, it's it's quite um, sharp on the finish, but I don't mean that in a in mm-hmm. a way. I mean that in in yeah, in quite a good way. It's it's interesting. 
Um, Gary said this is almost more port than port. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can. Uh, Decadent. Yeah, Decadent. that's the best way. I, I totally lost my, my ability to read there for a second. Uh, is, the, <laughs> is the perfect uh, words to describe it for me. Words, I suppose. But um, and that's an expensive cask in the first place, uh, says Jeff. Dash of water really brings out the red fruits, says Dan. Lisa's is beautiful. 100%. Mel says apricot jam, raspberries. It's come up a couple of times now, apricots. Um, the raspberries are very, very, very evident. Now, what the thing is, the beauty of, of these whiskies is, yes, they are cast strength. So certainly you're going to get a little bit more heat on the palate, but it doesn't overpower you. For me, with this one, with the 2000 port, it just sits at the side of my palate, just right, you feel that heat just right down the side. And the Madeira, which obviously will come on to, it's just the back of your throat. So... It's not, it's not overpowering at all. Mm -hmm. Summer fruit garden. Yeah, Matthew's got, there's two great tasting notes there. Matthew said, uh, amazing dram, some nice oak notes on the nose with some fresh apple in the background still uh, with an amazing palette of almost treacle uh, pot with a fantastic long finish and mild tannin note and coating mouthfeel. Um, James has said, I'm getting a full summer fruit garden here. I really can't put my finger on the finish for this. It reminds me of something that I really can't put my finger on. <laughs> Anyone else got an idea? Um, when someone else uh, says till, I, till when someone else says it, I'll know. Um, Gary says great nose, Matthew, uh, and Mel says uh, cigar boxes. Cigar box is interesting one. I wouldn't have gone for that kind of leathery mm -mm. cigar, but now that he said it, I can kind of see what he means. Um, Gavin says a few drops of water open up nicely. Uh, Matthew, yeah, says, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a couple of little drops of water hmm. just to bring out kind of some of the more subtle notes. I don't know. For me, it's on the finish. I don't know if this is what I can't remember who asked that question about the the finish they can't put their their finger on um, for me it's like it's almost yeah. it's more of a sweet spice so i get a little bit of cinnamon on the very very finish it probably isn't that that you're looking for but that's again everything's subjective oh wow well, yeah because like, that because of that kind of um sharpness almost um sourness you've got the kind of grapefruit kind of feel or those kind of fruitiness that are kind of um fruity but also quite bitter or sour um Campino Sweets, um, says Tosh there, has come out with some really interesting tasting notes um, today. Um, right, says the mouth in this one is a huge step up from the 16 red berries, drying demerara sugar, citrus zest, yummy. Sure, Brian was going to say that when it was a cast strength. Um, he was never going to say, he was not going to say the 16 was better. Um, Daniel and Heather says, I'm getting more cloves. Cardamom, cloves. cardamom is, a, is a really, really great shout. Um, I can definitely see that. So the, yeah, no, this is interesting. And let me just double check for you guys how much um, this is uh, pre-discount. Um, this is 260, um, which if you, in context, is actually not bad value when you when you consider you're going to get the discount on it. But also when you consider this was what distilled in 2000. And 2000, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the 28-year-old the um, port finish that, that Middleton put out a couple of years ago was 2,000 pounds. So... You know, oh, this, wow. is a, this is an absolute bargain, like, you know, for only a few years younger. <laughs> Ian says a Vimto note. Mm. Yeah. Vimto is a good shot. Yeah. 100%. And James in there with the tannins is again in there. Um, I'm going to try a bit more water with my one. Um, yeah, there's another cardamom note there. Red berries, cardamom, but I still get the apples and pears in the background. Really benefits from the extra ABV. Love this one. Well, after I've had a drop of water, that kind of apples and pears from the distant, that kind of orchard fruit yep. character that we've seen in all of them so far comes through a, a lot more. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, I mean the colour in, in it is great, but it's I thought it would be kind of more, when you said it was entire life in Ruby Port, mm -hmm. let's see that kind of pinkish hue that you get off a lot of those kind of heavily port fish whiskey. So it's interesting. Maybe maybe it would be there in the bigger bottle, maybe in the smaller measures. It's not as easy to I see. I was going to say, yeah, exactly. When you see the full bottle, it is definitely more pronounced. Sometimes, yeah, exactly. The, the smaller bottles, you don't get the colour coming in there. What I've noticed now that I've added a little bit more water is, I know we've said kind of the, the red fruits, the strawberry is really evident now on my palate. It's beautiful. It's like a pavlova. <laughs> <laughs> Panacotta Pavlova. This is uh, Panacotta Pavlova. Yeah, we've had. What did we have? We had. Was it caramelized peaches or something earlier as well? We'll all be hungry after this. Never mind anything else. Although I think you can't beat a tinned peach. You know, a tinned peach or a tinned pear. I can't. I can't. I don't know if I've ever had a tinned pear. I don't know. I used to, my my granny. Tinned pear of what? 
<laughs> my granny always just have tin pears and she had she gave it to us with ice cream have you never had that look possibly but i can't i, I i'm not saying i've never had it i just it's can't like a core i memory, can't recall yeah. the, the flavor you know the, the thing yeah. you know tin pear tin peaches have that such a unique kind of texture as well as the flavor it's uh you know um dan i'm stealing that joke I'm stealing that. Jokes, jokes about, about white, white sugar, sugar rare. rare. Jokes about brown sugar demerara. <laughs> I am 100%. Next time I have to make an old fashioned for an event, I'm going to drop that one in. Um, Ian says ice cream. This would be amazing over ice cream. Decadent though. Um, uh, listen, do you know what I did a couple of years? No, actually last, last year. Has COVID warped anyone else's sense of time? Because it really has with me. I think it was last year for Irish, International Irish Coffee Day. I like I am an Irish I love Irish coffee but I also love iced coffee so I was like how do I combine these two together into something that I'm going to absolutely love I made a whiskey caramel syrup with black bush and it was unbelievable literally unbelievable so when you said there about the like oh this with ice cream or over ice cream yeah it reminded me of that well that's reminded me of two things actually I presume you've had have you ever had a, a Belfast coffee Lauren Yes, Bar 1661. Love mm. them. Big fan. Um, for those of you who might not have heard of it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's an Irish coffee, but it's made with cold brew coffee, but actually not just cold coffee, but actual cold brew. So it, it's a bit mm. more acidic and it's made with pochine instead of whiskey, which is like, you know, Irish moonshine for those few people on here. May, may not, I'm sure everyone did, but just to clarify. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a really, really good kind of um, maybe like a summer version of an Irish coffee. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, but you also, the, one of the best cocktails I had years and years ago was a espresso martini, except with Bushmills Black Bush in it. Yes, uh, yes. Really well, because there is kind of a, a mango fruitiness to the Bushmills. 100%. Really 100%. And I always find Sherry Cast finishes always give me like a coffee undertone as well, like really, really subtle, and they just work brilliantly. Ian's just asked when International Irish Coffee Day is. I think it's the 25th of January. Look, correct me if I'm wrong. I have I no it's idea. It's the 25th. I have no idea. Let me just Google that for you. I don't want to tell anybody a lie. Um, I am officially, while you're Googling that, I am officially not to blow, I wouldn't want to blow my own trumpet, but I am officially the creator of the world's greatest Irish coffee. Um, Are you? Yeah, which is, which is, has, instead of sugar, we use uh, literal Pedro Jimenez sherry. So you have your whiskey, your PX sherry, your coffee, and then layered off with cream. Oh. And, it is, and it's it works because it's it's more alcohol, it's more complex, it's got its own finish, it's a bit extra texture, but it's also so sweet. Anyone who's had PX will know. So it still hits that sweetness note, and it's uh yeah. That sounds delightful. Can you can you batch that look and send me a bottle? Yeah, <laughs> I'll well, even pay for postage. <laughs> it's on it's it's on the menu in the Celtic Whiskey Baron in Clarny, County Kerry, and um, it's uh yeah. Ah, oh, stop. The best Irish whiskey nice. you've ever had in your life or Irish coffee. Um, John, I said really like the enhanced texture and mouthfeel on this one, but I think twenty one year old has better flavors and it's better balanced dram overall. Please don't kick me out of the Zoom call. Um, <laughs> no, not at all, John. Um, don't worry. As long as you meant the twenty one year old Bushmills and not like the Balvini or something, um, then you're fine. <laughs> Um, Jeff says I'm gonna uh, give tin pears, tinned pears a miss. Thanks. Um, he says, is there an insight? Well, yeah, they are nice. I don't know if you've seen when that oh. is, have you? Have you found that yeah, I was right. It's the 25th of January, International Irish Coffee Day. Very so there good. There you are. Um, Andrew says this definitely raises the bar over your core range. The higher ABV helps for my palate. Well done. First time I've had Bushmills. I'm impressed from a hardy Scott. Very good. Um, if I, I need uh, an excuse, we definitely need to get in that uh, diary and make that coffee, uh, Luke. Yeah. Um, Anna, honestly, yeah, get, give an espresso martini with black bush ago. It is so nice. So, do you know, I actually tried one. Um, when was I think it was about four years ago? I had my very first whiskey espresso martini, and I genuinely have never had vodka in one ever since. But I actually had it made, the bartender made it with the sexton. With me, obviously, Sexton and Blackbush are both sherry age, so either will work well. But um, we, he called it a sex teeny, which I thought was quite clever, quite funny. Um, but both work really, really nicely, even if you add just um, a little bit of honey syrup in there as well. So tasty. Yeah, give it give it a go, for and, sure. Yeah, and James... Does whiskey, does yeah, the whiskey, James yeah, 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 so yeah, the whiskey replaces the vodka. The vodka. Yeah, it doesn't go in on top of it, no. <laughs> no, that would be rocket fuel. My God, you wouldn't be sleeping. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, the whiskey replaces vodka. It is absolutely beautiful. It just works so much better. Whiskey obviously has a lot more depth than vodka does. So, yeah, I don't, I, I don't like vodka. That's the one spirit I can't take. Fair enough. Um, 
each of their own. I guess I actually don't mind vodka. I wouldn't drink it neat, but you know, nothing against the overall. It's all just distillate at the end of the day, you know. Exactly. <laughs> just a grain hard enough, like. Um, <laughs> the so we'll exactly. come on to the to the star of the evening. Um, I think we will. I love how we get so sidetracked with talking about dessert. I think there's a common theme here. We've chatted about tinned peaches, tinned. What did you say? Was it apricots? No. Tin, tin peaches, yeah. That was, and you were tin saying peaches. pears. That yeah. was it. Peaches and pears and panna cotta and everything. Unbelievable. Now, this one. I'm not just saying this because everyone's in front of me. The first time I tried this, I was a little bit lost for words because it's unbelievable. Can I also throw in there that this was distilled in 1991 and is actually older than me? Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> I was born in 94. <laughs> So this whiskey is actually older than me, which is quite insane. So, oh my God, gorgeous. So this was distilled, of course, in 1991. This is sitting at 50.2% ABV. It initially ages for well over 13 years, at least 13 years in bourbon and sherry casks. Now, the interesting thing about the split of bourbon and sherry here we would have went slightly heavier on the sherry proportion because we want those kind of big, those bold, those flavors to come through in the final cask. And then we obviously marry those barrels, the bourbon and sherry, and we finish for at least 15 years in a Madeira wine cask. Now, there is no legal definition um, as to what a finish is in either Irish or Scotland. Um, however, a 15 year plus finish is virtually unheard of. Um, most finishes, even for our core range, are nine months, you know, a year, two years, whatever. 15 year finish in Madeira is insane. Like the color is unbelievable. It's like an antique gold. Mm. <clears throat> it's almost like an auburn, auburn color. The color is, is stunning, yeah. Belgian waffles. That is the nicest whiskey tasting note I think I've ever read in my life. And maple syrup on the nose. And maple syrup, yeah, a hundred percent, spot on. I actually get an awful lot. We just talked about espresso martinis. I get an awful lot of black coffee actually on the nose of the the Madeira. Donage funk, I love that. Ginger cake, yes, absolutely. Yeah, espresso, hundred percent. So the black coffee note is so evident there. Again, like the twenty one, the orange is there. It's like a little sweet mandarin orange. Mm. Jeff says cool, cool how well. it's like being like being hit by Batman. I, I've I've been punched, but never by a, a billionaire, um, you know, trust fund <laughs> child. So that's an interesting one. Um, Mel says ginger cake espresso. Uh, Brian says strawberry drizzled in balsamic vinegar. Steve says Irish Ooh. coffee. It's 25th of January, Burns Night. How does that work? <laughs> well, we don't celebrate Rabbi Burns in in uh, in Ireland. On we? Ireland, well, no. I'm <laughs> sure Irish coffee would go well with 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 haggis. We're um, more interested in the whiskey over here. Yeah. Oh dear. Exactly. Yeah, like almost like co cocoa as well. Like cocoa. Yeah, ginger cake like, is great. Uh, ginger cake ginger is cake great brilliant. It has that, yeah, that kind of maltiness, that fruitiness, that spiciness. Yeah, it, it, it's a really, really good taste note. Um, ginger cake. And this, of course, also is exclusive to the whiskey shop as well. So it is, of course, yeah. And it's 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 you know it's not cheap, but. With your 15% tonight, you'll get you'll obviously get a you know well over a hundred pounds discount. And if you drop me, if you really like it and you and you want it, um drop me an email afterwards. We might see if we can do a little more off on that. We'll see, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh Gary says, I feel like going oh. from the 2000 to 1921 is a bit of a step down. Don't get me wrong, the 1921 is very good, but I think the 2000 blows about the water. That's interesting. There you go, Gary. I suppose each to their own. Um, I mean they're both fantastic whiskies. Um James has, has the opposite opinion. He says, hands down, my favourite tonight. Matthew says, some ethanol stewed almonds on the nose for me with a toffee sweetness present on the palate, getting slight uh, brioche with cocoa nibs and almost a slightly medicinal finish. Can't quite place it. Matthew's been on fire. Cocoa nibs. Tonight. Cocoa yeah, nibs. Matthew. Yeah. Ma yep. uh, Do you want a job, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> Come along alongside me and Alex. Um, yeah. John says, uh, now, this is one really, this one really is something special. Just, this is textured and balanced, lovely. Just really complex, so much going on. Um, it's so buttery as well, like loads of butterscotch coming through. Mm -hmm. Do 
but I must say some of the finest whiskies um, from that from about 1989 to 1993. I don't know what was going on in Bushmills, but the, the distillate coming out of there was and and the way it was matured and everything is is exceptional. Like um, it really is. Um, Mel says oh brown sugar cinnamon cinnamon biscuits. Um, Excellent. Demerara has come up a few, few bits tonight. Demerara, <laughs> yeah. And you often find that as well with an older whiskey. So for some of the maybe younger expressions, even if it's a sherry cask or a Madeira cask, you'll find it's more, say if it was maybe sitting at five years, even 10 years, it's more like burnt sugar, but that does mature into, into brown sugar and the longer you leave it in the cask, it kind of rounds itself out a little bit. See, just for a second there, I got, you know, like, do you know golden syrup? Like just the, the tin of syrup. Yeah, you know, to yeah. sprinkle that over a load of peaches that's a good show it just came just came right through there i was like oh that's gorgeous it's so so beautiful i love golden syrup but those tins it comes in once you've used it once they're just sticking for the next 10 years they're in your cover yeah um Jeff just off always forget they're there uh it changes a lot uh brian says this is what the 21 year old dreams of being at the avb of 21 year old is young there's a lot of life ahead of it you know this (laughs) It's only 21. There's loads of time for it to become the 1991. Um, Anna says the other half says the 1991 is so good. It's almost as good as a very good Scottish whiskey. <laughs> um, Bob says the 1991 is the best evening for me. James says this is the perfect ABV. Lovely coffee hint uh, in there with stewed mandarin in dark sugars. This is freshly baked brownie. Uh, this with a fresh, freshly baked brownie will be sublime. Uh, Gavin says too nice yes. to even think of adding water. Ian says someone mentioned earlier uh, but I get more maple syrup than golden syrup. Um, I think I'd actually stick with the golden one. I think it's maple is, yep. is, is is maybe that extra bit of sweetness or something. I don't know. There's something in this, you know, um, just personal opinion anyway. When we, th- th- that's the thing we said earlier about the 21 year kind of, you know, this is the big brother to the 21 year essentially. I think when we, when we initially started to bring Madeira wine casks into the distillery, we, again as we do with everything we experiment so obviously we recast you know the the bourbon or the sherry into the madeira but then we also kind of thought the madeira cask gives such a beautiful pronounced flavor that we also just put our new mixed spirit straight in there as well so there's kind of been a little a balance of things that we've done with the madeira wine cask obviously yes this is a finish but we do also have um a, a whiskey that's aged entirely in madeira so it's it's wonderful kind of seeing it at the different stages but I just think this is gorgeous. Every single time you go back to it, obviously you're picking out something else. Mm. The more I speak and the more I draw air into my palate, I'm getting more hazelnut. Yeah, yeah, I can see what you mean. There's definitely, mm. more, it, it's, it's it, as, as someone mentioned in the chat, it's so complex. So you do get, you, you get it all, you know, uh, from all the taste from, from ginger cake. And then the more you go back, the kind of nuttiness and once you add a drop of water, once again, like the other one, that the, the original kind of fruity distillate comes out. It's quite interesting. You're all making me laugh so much. Mel just said, notice this has made my nostri- nostrils dilate. Every time I take a sip of whiskey, one of you makes me laugh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great comment, uh, Mel. Uh, James says, uh, you have to, you, um, you have to go, you have, you have this and go back to the 10 and 21, 16 is gone. So I can't go back to that, but this is just so much more complex and exciting. Um, okay. says, you, can st- you can still tell that they have a Bushmills flavor. Uh, you can tell all five are related. Well, you know, why go across the street? You go across the hall, huh? <laughs> every time i take a sip someone says something funny um no it's it it is it is interesting is there obviously you're mentioning causeway three um yep. and potentially a a, a castrant offering coming into the core range is there anything else exciting coming down the line anything maybe interesting with the sexton range or anything um the Saxon, yeah, do you know what? It's it's absolutely coming on leaps and bounds in the US as well. We just partnered with the Walking Dead. Um, Mark, you have a bottle, don't you? I think you got your hands on one. You did, yeah. Um, so we partnered with the Walking Dead for a limited edition. It's still just the Sexton. Um, it's the same liquid, just a different bottle. Um, so that that's gone really well. The Sexton actually, um, which is a really interesting and quite an unbelievable little factoid. It, um, it was released in the US in 2017. Within the first year, it became the number one Irish single malt in the States, and it still is, um, which is quite quite spectacular. So yeah, with that's with the sex. And there is, um, I've tried a few potential expressions with the sex, and 
obviously it being sherry aged you can maybe guess yourselves what that may be but i can't say <laughs> um but yeah definitely it's it's plenty of exciting stuff coming from there but um Amazing. and yeah. in terms of the sextant uh mm. sorry to drop in terms of the sextant, right. number one um malt in america yeah. our malt in america what's it replaced it replaced that's a very good question i don't was it the 10 year I'm not sure the 10 years really really popular in the US that may not be correct though so we've kind of we've outdone ourselves in that regard but might not be true I mean obviously I think what was it sitting I read an article the other day about the US I think number one number one whiskey is Jameson number two is Bushmills number three is Tully I think it was so I think it was I think it probably was a 10 year actually which is interesting proper 12 damn behave yourself <laughs> um, we got some good you know Mel has said uh, I bet your moon is not hurting now your wisdom tooth is... no it's not Mel it's not at all whiskey does genuinely really help earlier we did we myself and Alex did a little tasting earlier and at one point I was just sitting like tilted sideways with the whiskey against my my, my sore tooth and it was fine so yeah um, all good whiskey, said, wh sorry. do you know that do you know look you probably know this Irish proverb what whiskey will not cure there is no cure for uh, yeah, uh, it's a it's a classic. Um, <laughs> um, Prue says, I mean, that's why they call it, you know, they call it a baby powers and all that, because, you know, you used to actually literally get prescribed whiskey as a, exactly. as a, as a medicine for pain. For I mean, something. that's how that's how it originated was a medicinal purpose. So, you yeah, know. that's how distillation came to Europe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 1324 Red Book of Austria. It was described as a cure for all. So the it still is today so <laughs> there you go that's great knowledge dropping um james says uh, are there other bottles in the cosmic collection other than these if so what are they and uh, are the feature ones in the collections because you did different collections for um for different regions didn't you A different we did bottles. yeah absolutely so the cosmic collection it's um it's centered on our kind of main global markets so for example this year there are 10 uh, releases across seven markets so uh, yeah absolutely there are many more kind of ranges we've had um we the one that was the uk released back in 2020 sold out within 24 hours that was the Fayette cask a french wine cask and um, it was actually the smallest cask we have ever used i think it was 112 liters um it was a really nice little gem so we had that one we also had um the likes of in ireland we've had muscatel we've had malaga marsala there's been um cognac in there as well there's been quite a few releases so yeah it's pretty much it was just time for us to really yeah the banyols as well chris absolutely um it was really just time for us to, to kind of show the world that yeah we're sitting on these amazing barrels and it's time to kind of let people enjoy them and so turns yeah muscatel muscatel yeah it's amazing um so yeah there's definitely a few more um keep your eyes peeled they will be coming out in the next couple of months um, we can't <laughs> we can't say what markets each release is going to just yet because we don't want to take away kind of from the excitement and the anticipation of the markets themselves. But keep an eye out in the next couple of months. The Irish release is in August, so very very soon. Anna said, uh, "I think you pay a premium for the length of finish. You need a dram uh, on a night and sit and smell and breathe and taste. When uh, you compare to that having five to ten drams a night of the cheaper stuff, it's not bad value." Uh, that's my speech to the wife. Um, and that reminds me of two things, Dan, because one is when I get a really good whiskey, that's, I, I'm totally that. I pour it and I watch something on Netflix or whatever, or I watch a football game, and you literally, you nose it, and you've, you've been there for about 20 minutes before you've even, even touched a thing. But the other side of it is, is that it is not bad value. And also, when you consider, the one I always say, uh, when I'm justifying how much money I'm spending on, on whiskey, is a bottle of whiskey you might go back to three or four times, um, and it might cost you £100, whereas you pay £20 on a bottle of a bottle of red wine and it's gone in a night so you know it's all it's all relative like you know or exactly. you pay yeah you pay x for a slab of beer so at least it's got a long long shelf life you know 100 percent. that's what i always say as well that's how you know it's a great whiskey if you've actually sat and nosed it for about 15 minutes and you don't actually realize you haven't even taken a sip yet it's kind of like it's pulling you into the glass but you're just enjoying actually nosing it marcus said what is pomero pomero is a it's a wine is it a is it a french wine yeah i think so we haven't i actually haven't do you know what i haven't even tasted the the pomerol yet so i really need to google what that is well if i figure what it, from, um 
from my I've never tasted a Pomerol finish before ever. Yeah. So I think it is a, it's a it's a region, it's a app appellation in, in France, I think, from yeah set knowledge there. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely it's definitely French. I haven't I've never ever tasted it before, so that's kind of my own personal research I'll need to do in the next couple of weeks. So the, the this is the wonderful thing about Bushmills. You learn so much about other wines that you never thought you would learn when we released the Causeway collection, uh, which is brilliant. Um, kind of dive deep into the world of cognac and all the likes of that. So I'm excited to see what the Pomerol is like, do my own research in the next couple of weeks. No, it will be interesting. I hope you send me a sample. Dan has said, uh, smell my <laughs> empty glass uh, next morning. It's a pleasure. There's definitely worse things you could be smelling in the morning, Dan. Um, Lawrence says, uh, without the bias of anything Bushmills, what is your favourite, most memorable whiskey you've had? So, is this outside of Bushmills? Let's go outside of Bushmills, yeah. Outside of Bushmills? Okay, the first one, genuinely, that came to my mind when you said outside of Bushmills was Blue Spot. Interesting. I yeah. love yeah, it. Good note. Yeah, it's a nice I one. absolutely, people are nodding in agreement. It's such a stunning whiskey. Absolutely beautiful. I love the uh, Red Breast the style as well. It's gorgeous. Yeah, Red Breast 10 um, is a great drop as well. It's, similar, it's not too dissimilar to the Blue Spot. Yes, um, exactly. Um, so yeah, that that would be, yeah, outside of Bushmills, 100%, it would be those two are phenomenal. It's so funny when people <laughs> people think I only drink Bushmills whiskey. And it's kind of, you have, to, you have to know what else is out there and what else you enjoy. So no, Red Breast. Yeah, Red Breast yeah, is, exactly. is another yeah, great no show. Blue. What about, what about your favourite Scotch, Lauren? Favorite Scotch whiskey? Um, oh God, what was it? I had whiskey. It was an Auchentoshan. I had. I still am learning to love peat. It was an Auchentoshan, and I can't remember what age it was, but it was absolutely beautiful. It's been right, so I'm, long. I'm laughing because this I is, can't this believe is... you went. You went for the one triple distilled Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and the one that's not peated um i'm still i'm still learning to, to love peat a little bit more but uh i haven't honestly like i mean scotch whiskey obviously like there's such a massive variety i have not get on the island it's so close it's like 20 minutes away from you as well it literally you took the words out of my mouth it's so close like from from valley castle to isla i think is like yeah you can you can basically do it in a day like it's insane um so there's still still a massive amount of personal work that I have to do with Scotch whiskey. I'm just, I mean, I don't know. I've just always stuck to Irish, but definitely it's a it's a an absolute um, array of whiskey that I just haven't really properly delved into yet. No, I've heard I've heard wonderful things about Isla. So you never Brian know. Said, uh, Brian said Glen Scotia there, which obviously your uh, your colleagues up north in in Ecklenville, they've revived the, um, mm -hmm. the Dunville's brand, but. Back when Dunville's had the, well, the Royal Belfast distillery was operating, they had a distillery in Belfast and in Campbelltown, um, yeah. like two sister distilleries. So um, big connections there. Uh, Daniel and Heather says, Isla is heaven. Um, but I must say, I hope uh, heaven is more affordable when I get there. But, you know, not to <laughs> really bad. no, and it's definitely, definitely, it's, uh, it's as I said, it's so close to us up here. I just never made the trip over. You can't, I'm pretty sure you can do it in a day. I think, is there only like, is it one or two hotels or something? And they just get all the whiskey, like tourist trade, basically. Yeah, well, there's, I don't know about one or two, but there's definitely um, those. Yeah, it's 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 there's only a handful of hotels. Um, and I says those are just tourist prices. But obviously they saw me coming a mile away. And um, the yeah, but I mean, you wouldn't. You'd, yeah, the, there's, it's phenomenal. Um, Isla's great. Yeah, definitely worth visiting. Gladick is also really nice, actually, Mark. I have to agree there. They so a couple of years, the kind of past few years, we've done um, the Waitrose Festival in London. And those guys have literally always ended up opposite us the past couple of years. And they are actually a lovely whiskey. Um, what was the other one I had? Highland Park. Is it their 15 year? Do they have a 15 year? Yeah, I think they, they do. Yeah. I think they do. I have a bottle of that in the house. It's lovely as well. Um, but I said that yeah, there's a lot of work to do for, for the Scotch whiskey side of things. <laughs> Always just stuff the Irish. Um, but there we are. Uh, Daniel Hellis has tried gonna have and not traditionally peated, but clearly in Ireland. There we are. Yeah, so that's the other side of it. There is lots of malts in Ireland that, that aren't peated at all. Like yeah, um, like Brooklady do do non-peated malt and obviously gonna have it. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. But this is this, yeah, as I said, just kind of chatting about the, the different Bushmills releases. It's it's been such a journey for me as well, as I said, to learn a little bit more about cognac and Pomerol, which obviously we'll, we'll have to do a bit of work on to before the release of that. 
Um, we also have this year as well. You can see it's on, if you go on the Bushmills Ireland social media, you can see the full list of whiskies. One of them is tequila, which I nearly cried with happiness about because tequila is my second love after whiskey. Um, so <laughs> that's great. Obviously, we're also owned by Jose Cuervo. Yeah, you work for a tequila makes company, sense. I was going to say. <laughs> it makes sense. Everyone knew they were there. It was just like, it's just a matter of time. Um, um, so yeah. The Ian has said, I think it was the guy at Brooklady who set up the Waterford Irish whiskey, which is true, uh, Mark Rainier did. Um, in my previous life, which is the last time I saw Lauren in, in, in Irish whiskey, I did an interview podcast with, with, um, with Mark Rainier about Waterford Irish whiskey. It's definitely worth mm -hmm. giving a listen to, Ian. Um, it's called the Celtic Whiskey Pod. Look it up. It's, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Um, <laughs> Tans is Mark gimmick, I mean Rainier. Um, there you go. He's, uh, he's Marmite in the industry, all right. Um, uh, Mel says, what's the situation sending straight from Northern Ireland? I presume whiskey means is that a Brexit question, Mel? Yeah, so yeah, from north to south. Is that I'm guessing is it north to south, Mel? Is that what you mean? Do you want to clarify that one, Mel? And in the meantime, we're I, I've just noticed the time there, folks. So if you want to give us one Mel's clarifying that, if you want to give us the your rundown, your favorite order of the night, um, and we'll get a, yeah, a that'd be interesting. Of, of which is people's favorite whiskies before we finish. Uh, in the meantime, Jeff has said uh, that's why. The giant built the causeway so we compare whiskey between Irish and Scotch. That's a that's a good Scotch. I mean, you have to remember though as well, um, Jeff, that that um, the original Scots were Irish, like you know, they were they were Gaels from the north who 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 um, moved into Northern Ireland and displaced the Picts. So, you know, the <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, um, Mel, if you mean north to south, I think there has been a couple of bit like the B word Brexit issues from there. Um, I think they're trying, the distillery are trying their hardest to work out how we kind of work around that. Because I think so many couriers, like I think we used, was it DHL? We used, they just won't do it anymore for, for alcohol, which is very frustrating. But um, yeah, keep, keep an eye on the website and that will tell you of any updates and you can kind of see where the postage options are. It's very frustrating for us as well, because we know obviously we have a huge clientele in, in the South. So we shall see. Um, okay. I'll just put in the chat there, folks, um, the discount code for tonight's whiskies. Um, I'll include it in the email as well with the recording, um, as I normally do. So um, WS15VTBM uh, is the, the code that will give you 15% off all the SKUs you've tried tonight. Um, so Mela said customs VAT duty to England, um, but I suppose you haven't had issues there. But you know, No issue. Really no, right. that's fine. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. There's absolutely no issues there. We can send across to the mainland, no problem at all. Yeah, because for um, the time being, Bushmills is obviously, you know, part of the occupied. Crowd. I really want to hear from, who was it, James? Was it James's first time trying Bushmills? I really, like, I'm um, hoping we've won you over. <laughs> you started pretty strong. <laughs> Most people, when they're trying Bushmills for the first time, try the original or Blackbush. A yeah, lot of 1991. Sorry. No, you're fine. Look, sorry. A lot of 1991s at the top here, I'm saying. Mm. Well, Dana said the 10-year-old um, at his top, when he said this tasting was a real eye-opener, eye Thanks, Olive. Neglected the core rate yeah. to revisit. Um, so brilliant. Uh, yeah, lots of 1991s. 1991s by 2000s. Uh, the interesting one then is, is where the 16 or 21 comes uh, next. Um, so I think, I know it's a cliche thing to say, but I can literally think it is pretty much split. Um, you have a 21 above, you know, 91 then 21, 91 then 21, 91 then 16, 91 then 16. So, yeah, there's a few interesting ones, but it does seem to be the general consensus is 91, 2000, then either 16, 21, and then the 10. Um, and Tasha said, money, no object, 91, 2016, 21, 10, um, if he's paying or if they're paying, um, the 16-year-old. 16 is um, a massive, massive bang for buck. Um, and Daniel and Heather have gone for the 10 to start as well. Um, I yeah. thought you guys would have gone 21. There you are. Excellent. Well, let's oh, go. <laughs> We have, we have, you know, on the ball whiskey um, enthusiasts who aren't just swayed by, uh, by, by the age statement on the bottle. Um, Max, I tell you what, Luke at, at whiskeyshop.com, uh, send me an email, we'll see what we can do. Um, James, I love the tasting this evening. You definitely have opened my eyes. Uh, again, another, another eye opener. Um, being expensive uh, of whiskey and juice shopping. <laughs> So, yeah, brilliant. Well, that's great to hear, James. And look, I, we're coming up to nine o'clock. I suppose we'll, we'll leave it there, folks. Um, our next, just by complete coincidence, it's not it's not some agenda that I'm running. Our next tasting will also be an Irish whiskey tasting, which will be Tullamore <laughs> Dew. So um, watch the space. That'll be hopefully announced in the next week or so. Again, that's just a coincidence that they, they kind of came along. We'll be back to 
the scotch coming up after that and then we have um we actually have a mezcal tasting coming up later this oh, year nice um that you'll get some more details about maybe around the middle of, of august so we're going to try and experiment out with the digital drams to try and do something outside the comfort zone but once well, after august we'll be also back into doing the regular scotch tastings as well so um so yeah please stay tuned thank you for everyone who bought a pack and for everyone who's watching back on the recording who's not here live and thank you lauren especially um for joining us is there anything you wanted to say before we finish up i just want to say thank you so much everyone for taking um about an hour and a half out of your your thursday evening for joining us it's um so lovely to see how much clearly how much love there is for Bush Mills, not just for the more special releases, but also the core range as well. So um, it always very much humbles us to see how respected the brand is. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, hopefully we'll meet one day in person again. Who knows? Um, and thank you so much, Luke, as well, for, for keeping everything running so smoothly. So slauncha, everyone. Cheers. Slauncha. Thank you for joining us, Lauren. Hope thank you so much, soon. guys. No uh, worries. Thanks, everyone. Um, and any more questions, uh, just drop me an email to... to to the email address I just shouted out or to the um, the, the email address you got the, the Zoom link from. Um, so brilliant. Thanks very much, folks. And we'll see you again for the next one. Bye.